Genesis gender roles are in no way overturned in terms of spiritual authority in the prophets and teachers of Israel. <clears throat> so in other words, let me just be very clear, because some of you are like a soft complementarian. I call those egalitarians or feminists, depending how, how good I feel about the day. But, but a soft complementarian would, 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 would feel like some of this is okay to say in a small crowd, but this is a bit awkward, maybe not, not quite what our day needs. But, but on these things, you're not as clear scripturally. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is grounding you deeper in scripture. Never is the role of women in over 1,500 years from Moses to Jesus in the whole Old Testament account, in over 1,500 years of Bible writing, God never overturns the, bib the biblical principle where the authority for teaching in spiritual matters would be given to the women. Priests and Levites of every rank who were the responsible teachers to serve God and teach the people, they were men. No female prophet ever appears in the Old Testament with anything like the public authoritative declarations sent by God as the male prophets. Did God miraculously speak to both men and women that would probably surprise most of us how often that happened outside of the usual prophetic ministry? Yes. There were women gifted with receiving messages from God and speaking them. Did they both have similar jobs to do? Absolutely not. There is never a case where the woman, where the prophetess, has an institutional authority. There's not a single example we can point to in the Old Testament where a, a prophetess has an institutional authority like Isaiah or like Jeremiah or any of the prophets that spoke to the kings and the establishment and the people in their day. Miriam is used as, as, as an argument against this in Exodus 15 verse 20. A prophetess, she's called, who after, after they, they, they escaped Egypt in the, through the, uh, the, the Red Sea, it says that she began singing and all of the women followed. I can't for the life of me see how that's an argument against what I've said already. She was gifted prophetically in the song and the singing and the women followed. That's in the, that, that, I'm amen in that. Holder in 2 Kings 22, she was a prophet who spoke on behalf of the Lord, but hers was a matter of private consultation when asked. She did not walk the streets preaching and publicly exhortating in that way. There was no decrying the, the public sins in that way, similar to Sapphira in the New Testament. It was a, a personal matter of giftedness in a smaller, more domestic, more uh, uh, private consultation matter. Noah Dyer in Nehemiah 8.3, I read this as an argument this week. Ne she's literally a false prophet against Nehemiah and God's purposes. Don't know why that's such a great example. But yes, she's called a prophetess. <laughs> like Jezebel in, in Revelation, not really a win. And then there's Anna. In, in old, I know she appears in, in Luke, which is New Testament, but she's still under the old covenant time and epoch, and she was called a prophetess. But again, even her, in the giftedness that she had, she was somebody who we are told was given to fasting and praying in the temple. Meanwhile, the male prophet John the Baptist was preaching and decrying, exhorting publicly and authoritatively. So we can clearly see, not that God didn't speak to women prophetically, but that they were not given that role of authority.